most amazing childhood and because of that that is one of the reasons why I really want to have a big family myself I would really love to have five kids if God my youtube channel if you are a new subscriber kindly hit the subscription button and also the notification button so you won't miss any of my upcoming videos to all my new subscribers as well as returning subscribers welcome to joyful living with taste so in today's video i'm going to share a little bit about myself where i come from and who i am so without wasting any more time let's get right into this video my parents Lorette and peter erasmus they raised 27 children yes family you heard right 27 children but i had the most amazing childhood we had a swimming pool and um okay so it wasn't big enough for all 27 of us to swim at the same time so then the boys had to swim first and then the girls had to swim and although we had a swimming pool i don't know how to swim my brothers tried to um teach me how to swim but i just couldn't snap it what i can do is i can put it on my back and that's it um one of my fondest memories was christmas christmas in our house was just amazing um, 27 kids all the presents that you get so yes our Christmas tree it looked like Santa's chimney it was packed with kids like you can see on the picture it was just amazing my mom would decorate the house with Santa sauce Christmas was just very special in our house um, whenever we had a school project due <laughs> we would sometimes forget to let my mom know in time um, and then around eight o'clock before we need to hand it in we would wake her up and then tell her mom we've got a assignment or project due she would curse us out but she would still help us with love and care she would still help us do the projects so you'll hear me talk a lot about my mom my mom my mom my dad was in the picture it's just that my dad we were with my mom most of the time my dad um, worked in African countries and some other countries so he would work and then come home for two weeks so most of the time that we spent we spent it with our mom so both my parents did raise us my father wasn't just there but my father went there full time so I actually had the most amazing childhood and because of that that is one of the reasons why I really want to have a big family myself I would really love to have five kids if God bless places me with five kids I would really love to have five kids the reason being is we drove my mom crazy but I could see my mom loved us so much so that's one of the reasons why I would also have liked to have a big family myself so um, primary school was amazing high school was also amazing and um, I was a typical teenager in high school stubborn did not listen to my parents so yes i was your typical teenager in high school and i remember back then my mom used to tell me like tessa i pray to get you but um as ignorant as i was i would think to myself and i remember i actually said it once to her that yeah you just went to an orphanage and you saw me and you picked me up and you adopted me as easy as that and I remember she would just look at me and say, Tessa, I really pray to get you. So on the 30th of November 2016, my mom passed on of a sudden heart attack. It was very sudden. Um, she was in hospital for a day and a bit. And she went into a coma. And then in a coma, 
she had a heart attack. I remember when my sister phoned me, um, I immediately went to our home in Mukwazi. And as I was sitting there, mourning with the family, something told me to her, you go look in your mom's Bible. Because I used to write my mom a lot of letters. And I remember this particular letter that I wrote my mom, where I told her that when she dies, I'm gonna make her up like a princess so that when she goes to heaven she looks like a princess for God so I was basically looking for that letter that I wrote my mom but instead I found an envelope with my name on the envelope when I opened up the envelope I saw a newspaper article um, still look as if it was from the previous day newspaper but it was in 1993 and I looked at it and I started reading through the article and it basically said that there's a newborn baby found in a box wrapped in a box and um, it was left on Pretoria station it still she still has her hospital bracelet on and if anyone knows of something please do contact this number and I remember reading it and I felt so sad while reading it because you know I was so ignorant always you know just brushed it off when my mom told me that she really wants to share this with me I would really brush it off so I felt so sad because my mom never had the opportunity to tell me the story herself so I had to ask my sister about it and the way she explained it to me is like Tessa it was really difficult to for my mom to adopt me because it was 1993 and you know it wasn't easy for um, a white person to adopt a black baby but my mom had help from a social worker called um, Tessa van Dijk who assisted my mom to adopt me because not only my mom um, wanted to adopt me there was a lot of other people that also read the same newspaper article and also um, wanted to adopt me so my mom really prayed a lot to um, get me <laughs> and um, yes she adopted me and I remember after reading that newspaper article I was very emotional for about a week because I just couldn't believe that she couldn't you know tell the story from her point of view and now I had to ask other people that was with my mom at the time but it would have been more you know special if she could have told, shared the story with um, me so after my mom passed on I think it was about two months later you know I started looking for my biological mom so on the bracelet it says so on the newspaper article, it says that the bracelet wasn't clear. So what I did is I started finding private detectives um, to help me search. I started finding hospitals, you know, if they still have files from all the moms that gave birth, so that you can run it through a database in home affairs to see of all the moms that um, did not, that they gave birth and who did not register their baby. Maybe they could be a lead, but it was a dead end because hospitals did not have any records of those files anymore. Private detectives told me that it's a dead end. And I kept on asking myself, what am I gonna do now? I really want to you know, hear her side of the story. And I remember after a month of you know, really doing the most to track down my biological mom, God gave me a dream. Um, in the dream, there was a person telling me that we found your biological brother. And I was so excited that I ran to see who it was. And when I got to the person, it was one of my brothers that I grew up with. And that was the person I remember giving him like a very tired hug. And when I woke up, it was like I had this peace over me. Because at that moment, I realized that I was exactly where God wanted to be, me to be at the moment, and that I should stop, you know, looking into my past, you know, looking for a woman that never wanted me, you know, my, but God blessed me with such an amazing family, 
and if it wasn't for my mom that adopted me I never would have been the person that I am today so in 2016 I started Bless Bambi Foundation and Bless Bambi Foundation was prophesied to me when I was 20 um, a prophet came to me and she basically told me that you know she can see that one day I am going to help a lot of people I'm gonna start my own foundation and back then I was still a bit selfish and I remember I just looked at it and I basically laughed in her face and I told her there's no way that I'm gonna start a foundation because I am one of the most selfish people and I don't care about other people and three years later um, on Nelson Mandela Day I worked at a company and I couldn't get off at the company because I just started working and I thought to myself but why just why only make Nelson Mandela you know a day where you can do something for someone that's less fortunate why can't we make every day Nelson Mandela day so then I got a group of friends together and that's how Bless Bambi Foundation started so we mainly focuses mainly focus on in doing Christmas parties for the less fortunate because Christmas was so dear to my heart and dear to my family um, so we do Christmas parties and then in 2017 I started Women's Lifestyle Network so Women's Lifestyle Network it's um, a network where we host yearly awards for women in different categories and then we also have a online magazine that we've been running for the past two and a half years and we just recently launched membership and then in 2021 um, I started this personal brand of mine Joyful Living with Taste. So Joyful Living with Taste it's basically a brand that speaks about purpose. Um, I believe that we all have a purpose in life um, whether big or small we are put on this earth for a purpose to make a difference in someone else's life and you know if it wasn't for all the people that assisted my mom and my dad to raise me I never would have you know help other people so that's why I strongly believe in purpose so I launched my journal in 2020 it's a yearly journal where you literally journal everything throughout the year from you know where you see yourself in the year what you want God to help you with because I also believe that through the power of writing um, that's how my mom saw me because a journalist actually took a time wrote an article about an article about me and put a photo of me on the cover of the Bill magazine so it was through the power of writing that my mom saw me and that I am Tessa <laughs> So that's why you know I launched this journal because there is power in writing. So this is my testimony and this is who I am. So like I said, we all have a purpose in life. So in closing, my advice that I would really like to give to someone that really wants to follow in their purpose is to write down the description of the kind of person that you want to be you know the things that you want to overcome and also the qualities of your personality that you know that are a liability to you write down the people that you know who you need to have in your life as well as who you know that is not good for you the type of environment that you want to be in and type of environments that you know that is not healthy for you it will not be an easy journey at all because not a lot of people will like what you do or approve what you are doing because you are following your god-given purpose in life but when you do so make it a joyful journey thank you so much for watching my video and please do remember to comment, like, and also subscribe. Till the next video, goodbye.